Hey guys, welcome to the Bourbon Airing YouTube channel. I'm your host Austin. Let's get started. So we're outside today. Uh, I decided to do a series on cocktail basics, mixology basics. Uh, that way you are on the same page as I, as I am when I'm making these cocktails in the future. I am by no means a bartender. I am very, very uh, new at this and I'm learning along the way. So you're going to be learning with me. Uh, today is going to be an overview video where I'm going to go over everything you need for just to make some basic cocktails, some basic old fashions, sours of different different types and different layers. Um, and then I'm going to go in depth in each category that I talk about today. It's going to have its own video where I go more in depth, go from beginner to kind of intermediate, maybe a little advanced, but not really uh, just sticking pretty beginner to intermediate. So real quick, let's go over everything and I'll make a quick cocktail for you. So what do you need? The most I don't want to say the most important thing because I think the most important thing in a cocktail is your spirit. Uh, so we're going to start there. Your base spirit. Now, everything I'm gearing toward here is going to be whiskey related and or maybe rum. Uh, get, grab some vodka, grab some gin and replace the whiskey and rum here and it'll work fine. But what I like to keep on hand for everyday basic cocktails, I like a nice relatively cheap rye. Same thing with the bourbon and a rum. Now I'm going to go over these real quick and I'll tell you when I go into the spirits video, I'll go more detail what I like. But basically here, if I'm making it, you know, real cheap, real basic, I just want something like whistle pig here. This is 96.56 proof uh, rye, six year rye. It is great for cocktails and it's, it's a proof point I like. So I like sticking around a hundred uh, in cocktails because that lets the whiskey shine, lets the whiskey shine through as a nice layer. Um, but if I'm going really basic or I'm playing with funky flavors like a smoky scotch or a nice funky rum, I'm okay with lower proof. Like this is an 80 proof rum from Sugarfield. They're basic white rum. It is delicious. It is fantastic. Go pick it up if you have a chance. And if you're in Louisiana, love Sugarfield. I talk about them all the time. They're fantastic. Love the guys over there. Great rum. Their funky rums are fun to play with, but as a baseline rum, their white rum is perfect for a bunch of cocktails, like a basic daiquiri, rum old fashion, uh, a bad daiquiri is a rum sour, but a rum sour. Um, rye is great for old fashions, whiskey sours, uh, but everywhere you put a rye, you can also put a bourbon. And this bourbon I like here is Four Roses Small Batch. It's cheap, it's readily available. It's 90 proof, so it's not bottom of the shelf. Um, I will stick to some bottle and bonds or even some Old Granddad 114. It's my really my favorite cocktail bourbon. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I want something cheap and easy. So yellow label here, Four Roses Small Batch. So that's my spirits. Let's go on to the next ingredient that's I find really important uh, is syrups. And this is gonna, you're gonna find these simple syrups uh, fancy syrups and everything both your we're focusing here obviously on old fashions and sours those are both both have simple syrups you're gonna have stuff like manhattans that don't have it uh, that has a separate uh, alcoholic component to sweeten it we'll talk about that in future videos when we get to uh, more in depth but basically syrup so what I have here hold please what I have here is some basic simple syrup I made this earlier in fact You'll see a video on this very soon on how to make this. It's a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. So one part sugar to one part water by weight. Uh, heat it up till it's all clear and put it together. This is so versatile. Again, you can use it for old fashions. I strongly suggest using it in sours because it's very just sweetness. It doesn't have much flavor other than sweetness. Uh, and so it lets every, all the other ingredients really shine through. If you want to take your old fashions up a notch, use brown sugar and again more details later use brown sugar demerara sugar something like that or get you a good old-fashioned syrup this is from syrup de saison out of lafayette louisiana another relatively local company love them and this is uh it's made with cane sugar uh but it also has like vanilla um let's see what else ingredients brown sugar cane sugar water vanilla extract potassium so it's a little elevated with flavor. It's got the vanilla in there. It's got the brown sugar to give kind of that caramelly flavor. It's kind of, take your old fashions up a notch if you're looking for that classic old fashioned flavor. Uh, this right here is another quick example. This is tonic syrup. So this is in the place. If you want to do gin and tonic, you can use gin, this syrup, and then re regular sparkling water instead of finding, uh, instead of going to find, you know, your own tonic water. 
Uh, also, I have a ginger syrup that makes great meals. But again, we'll go in way more detail next video. The next video that's coming out is about syrups, I promise. So after that, we have bitters. This is your next flavoring component. Uh, the basic, basic bitters here are Angostura brand. Angostura, uh, their aromatic bitters is classic. You cannot go wrong with this. It's delicious. Another one that's easy to find that I would love to have on hand is the orange bitters. This will take you a long way in old fashions for sure. Just changing up your bitter profile will change the drink completely, especially if you're using just a regular simple syrup. Bitters play a huge role in flavoring. Uh, and then we'll have a bitter episode where I go into more details with those and even how to make your own bitters. So stay tuned for that. Got to stay hydrated, y'all. So finally, we're going to discuss tools, tools you need to actually mix a cocktail well. And again, this is going to be a long video when I get to the tool section, the tool video, because you can go as basic as basic can be and you can get real advanced. So some basic tools that you'll need without going to the store, you probably have this at home, just regular mixing cups. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, measuring cups like this little Pyrex, even the bigger ones are fine. Um, and then a spoon, this is a bar spoon, but you can use whatever spoon you got. You can use a mixing straw. It doesn't matter that and something to mix in. Again, this is a, uh, mixing glass. That's, you know, if you want to go into cocktails, this is something you should pick up, but any old cup will work. You can even mix. I'll show you in a second. I'll make it old fashioned where you mix in the glass. Uh, shaker tins are great. Uh, this is a Hawthorne strainer. You want some sort of strainer to get the ice out. Uh, any mesh strainer, colander, if you're using big enough ice is fine. This is a great tool for your step up. Um, and again, I'll go in more details later. And shakers. Now you can use that classic cocktail shaker. You can use, uh, this is a Boston shaker. These are two metal ones. You can replace this with a beer glass, you know, pint glass, same sort of thing. You just put it together put the drink in and shake, shake, shake. Um, again, you don't need this. You can always stir whatever you can shake. You can also stir. It will go into why you'd want to shake versus stir later, but for basics, it doesn't matter. Just stir, just stir. So, uh, when I talked about, you know, this little measuring cup, this is very, very useful in making cocktails. This is called a jigger. It's a Japanese style. I believe, uh, basically this side holds one whole ounce. This side holds two whole ounces. If you look inside, there's there's uh, lines in here. This will measure out a half ounce, three quarter ounce, and a full ounce. This will measure out a uh, ounce and a half and two ounces. It's just a quick, easy way to measure your cocktails. Um, just if you're gonna advance in anything, get actually something for a cocktail rather than just your at home stuff. I suggest this it is the easiest thing to use once you learn how to use it. So. Real quick, I'm gonna make you a quick old fashioned with my simple syrup. I'm gonna finish off this rye here. Hopefully I have two ounces of it and some mango bitters. I'm gonna use my basic, basic. The only bartending tool I'm using here that's not a regular, this is gonna be this bar spoon because I didn't feel like getting a regular spoon out. So let's clear this off, except for my ingredients. Again, it's going to be really, really basic. In fact, I didn't even talk about garnishes. This is cocktail cherries. They're cheap and get them everywhere. This is one of my favorite brands, but you can get a cheaper, you know, regular maraschino cherry. This will elevate your cocktail as well. So I'm, I'm actually going to include this because I love it. So let's start making, shall we? And grab a glass. We're gonna make it in the glass because that's just a simple way to do it. And I'm gonna use this. So, first ingredient, two ounces of your rye whiskey. Ooh, just a two ounces. In fact, it's gonna be a little heavy. Just to finish this bottle off, it's actually gonna be about two and a half. Um, but, bottle kill. There we go. Add that, add about half an ounce. I'm gonna go a little heavier again because I have a little bit more whiskey here, but half an ounce of your simple syrup. There we go. And two to three dashes of your Angostura bitters. Be careful, this comes out quick. 
I like a lot of bitter, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you more detailed recipes later on, don't worry, but just give it a quick stir here. And I'm gonna add my cherry. Little bit, just a little touch of that juice. Makes it perfect. There you have it, a very basic, anyone can do it old fashioned. Cheers.